lighting fixture types and symbols. This slideshow is going to show you the drafting symbols and what these drafting drafting symbols actually represent. I'm sure you will, you will find many of them very similar. You can go into your own house and look for these and you will find these types of fixtures. But this is uh, the first part of your electrical and lighting instruction and this will strictly cover lighting. We'll have one later or actually the uh, the second part of this one will cover other electrical symbols and and, and uh, the things that they represent. So let's get on with uh, this is a ceiling fixture. This is the symbol that represents a ceiling fixture. A lot of people refer to it as a surface mount fixture because it mounts onto the surface of the ceiling. And uh, it, this is a type of ceiling fixture. This is not the only ceiling fixture, but there are several type, uh, types of them or styles of them. And they basically mount on the surface of the drywall. Uh, this picture that you see above this is the junction box, which holds all the wires. And all the wires for this fixture would come into this box. And then this um, light fixture would attach to this box which is actually on the other side of the drywall so this is the visible part down here this you'll never see unless you're installing them or servicing them one note that i put at the bottom is all fixtures should be represented with a 12 inch diameter circle there's no rule rule written that says you must represent them with a 12 inch circle it's mainly uh, determined by um, whoever that you are working for whatever company that you're working for and um, for this class use a 12 inch circle and then of course these extension lines don't really have any specific length to them but uh, be reasonable on, on those. The thing is, is you want to be consistent. So once you make one symbol, I would turn it into a block and then use that same symbol across all of your rooms and any of your other plans that you might be working on. All right. Next is the recess fixture. This fixture fits up into the ceiling. The, uh, this picture shows the recess can or a lot of people call them light cans or can fix your recess can you'll hear, hear several different terms used and all of what you see here most of what you see fits up above the ceiling above the drywall and you'll never actually see that what you do see is the uh, the light emitting part of it that sticks down through the drywall which is this part here and then of course that usually will have usually I have some trim around it making it look a lot nicer. And then of course the light will be downcast out of it. And this is the symbol that we use for recess fixture. Uh, fan hanger fixture, okay. This is a symbol for a fan hanger fixture. It's pretty much just like a ceiling fixture, just has an F in it for fan. Um, now, of course, we all know what a ceiling fan looks like. You probably have several of those in your house. And then there's also this contraption. This is what goes up above the ceiling um, that braces the ceiling fan to uh, your joists and allows you know, the fan to hang down. And uh, this, again, is above the ceiling. You'll never see this. Um, and typically this is what um, your positioning, um, you know, you're not really worried about what the ceiling fan itself looks like or how it's going to be represented. You're just mainly worried about putting a symbol that would represent um, installing one of these uh, electrical boxes so that a ceiling fan can be hung from it. This is a fluorescent fixture. Uh, this is, of course, one of many types of fluorescent fixtures. In the classroom, if you look up at the ceiling, those are fluorescent fixtures. Those are four light fluorescent fixtures. This is a two light. Um, and of course, this is a surface mount versus the ones above you in the classroom, which are uh, recess mount. And um, some, some of these do exist in residential um, applications typically like in kitchens and maybe bathrooms garages and shops and uh, the symbol to represent a fluorescent fixture is this symbol right here two horizontal lines and then two arcs at each end 
Um, of course, there are several different types of, of these um, fixtures, so and, and the same with a lot of the other ones as well that we've looked at. And that's where your annotation comes in handy, and you actually put notes out beside of it. And of course, fluorescent made me think of that because you have two tube, four tube, single tube, you have surface mount, recess mount, um, there's all kinds. Drop cord fixture. I have a photo of a, of a uh, chandelier here and then another photo of uh, some sort of a ball type fixture. And anything basically that hangs from the ceiling on a cord that is not directly attached to the ceiling is a drop cord fixture. And this is the symbol for a drop cord fixture, the same as a surface uh, mount fixture with a D in it. This is a ceiling fixture with a pull switch. Uh, the symbol, the same as a surface mount type fixture. Sorry about that, Bill. Um, surface type fixture, and it has an S in it to represent switch. And you'll see different types. This would be one that you might see, um, you know, surface mount to a ceiling. Of course, both of these would be surface mount. This one is more um, utilitarian in style probably be found in a garage or shop or closet or something of that nature. Special fixture, okay, basically the same symbol as a surface mount fixture. However, you will have notes out beside it explaining any additional information regarding that fixture. It could be a heat lamp or uh, maybe some sort of special lighting for a special lighting effect or something you never know. Okay, so anything that really doesn't have a definite symbol to it, uh, you would use this, but with notes out beside of it. And typically a lot of them will have notes, um, not necessarily always out beside them, but in a legend uh, somewhere or a schedule on a set of plans showing you what that symbol represents in more detail. And that is it for lighting symbols. Now let's see what they look like in AutoCAD. All right, now this is what your um, lighting fixtures are going to look like in AutoCAD. Uh, as you see, I've drawn three that I'm typically going to use in my designs. Um, and this, of course, is all interior. I have not even gotten to exterior yet. We'll do that sometime later. But for the interior lighting, I have a regular ceiling fixture. I have a recess fixture and I have a ceiling fan fixture all of which will be placed inside of my plan now what I've done with my plans I've turned everything off except for my uh, interior and exterior walls and that's to give me some clean space to work with so I don't have everything else in the way um, so hopefully you've been saving all of your geometry on specific layers, layers that are dedicated to that category of geometry, uh, such as your interior walls should be on a layer, exterior walls should be on a layer, uh, plumbing fixtures should also be on their own layer, and then you will have no trouble turning these off. However, if you did not do that, you'll have trouble cleaning things up so that you can uh, place your light fixture. Um, but anyway, I'm going to start with my ceiling fan fixture and what I do, this is the way I do it, is I start by copying it um, and I just click on it because that's what I'm going to copy. Let's see, something didn't work right there. Let me try that one more time. All right, let me select it first. Okay, oops, not both of them. Okay, copy, specify a base point right in the center and there we go. All right, and I copy it because what I'm going to do is place several in here, several throughout my house. Um, you know, you want to look at uh, your different places in here, living rooms, dining rooms, and things like that, and decide if you want a uh, ceiling fan in those locations. So I'm going to put one right here in the center of my living room, the center of the master bedroom, the center of the uh, one of the child bedrooms, and the center of this other child bedroom. Okay. And the one above probably isn't exactly center, but I do want to line that up. Um, it's good to have everything lined up as best possible. There we go. Being stubborn. There we go. That's better. 
Okay. Now, of course, if it can't be lined up, and of course, you want it to be in the center of the room, um, and that may tell you that in some cases they can't be lined up. But like over here on these bedrooms, where it is necessary and it's, and it's capable, go ahead and line it up. It just makes it look more professional. Um, so those are my ceiling light fixtures. Uh, this one, I'm going to do some recess cans. So I am going to do a copy again, select the recess can, and hit the enter button. I'm going to specify the base point, and I'm going to bring it over here. Now, light cans, of course, function differently. They have light that casts down from them, and it typically typically takes more of them uh, to create, um, you know, an adequate amount of light. The good thing about them typically, too, is that they're also controllable in many cases. Uh, a lot of times, a bank of recess lights will be controlled by a dimmer switch, or even multiple zones where you can turn these three on, but not those three. Uh, and that's probably what I'll end up doing in this design. So I'm going to use these can lights. I'm going to use them in the living room. So I'm going to place three right across here. Make sure they're all lined up. Okay. And then three across here. So that way they will be zoned. And, you know, I could turn these three on over here, or I could turn the other three on, or I can turn all six of them on. And that will come in later when it comes to putting in switches and controls and things of that nature. So find your geometry, your reference geometry, and get it all turned on and going so you can get everything lined up. And if you've got one that's not quite lined up. And I want to line that up right through the center there. All right, that's good. So those are three recess light fixtures. And now I'm going to place some ceiling fixtures in my bathrooms and uh, probably the kitchen as well. So select, copy, base point. Okay, one bathroom gets a light fixture. And it doesn't do any justice to center it off of the the uh, child bedroom, so I'm going to center it off of the master bedroom. Uh, then there's this bathroom over here, which will get, uh, let's see, let's do two, well no, actually this is going to have, um, there will be some light fixtures on a mirror, right above a mirror also, so, and that's one that I have to make. Um, so I'm going to put it right over in that area. Then the kitchen will have a light fixture, ceiling fixture, and then the little dining area will have a light fixture. Um, I might change that to a drop cord fixture so it could be kind of like a um, chandelier, I guess. Uh, so anyway, that's how you do light fixtures and how you position light fixtures. Um, you know, you want to light up a room, typically one light fixture is good for any room. Um, if any custom lighting, such as I have in my living room here, um, you know, you can do that as long as you have a purpose for it and as long as you know what that purpose is. You're not just putting light fixtures here and there for no reason. Uh, we'll get more in depth with that next year when you start your um, Architecture 2 year and we'll talk about calculating uh, lighting for um, certain effects uh, that you would like to achieve inside of a home. But uh, that's it for uh, placing your lighting fixtures. Uh, the next video you see will show um, the electrical switches and receptacles and show you how to wire your light fixtures. So we have to have wiring to show how we are controlling these light fixtures. So we'll see you then.